Repentance leads to Christ-like character. The sin of belonging to Jesus while also serving the Queen of Heaven. Part 7 We mentioned in the last segment that God had established specific feasts for Israel, which would prompt them to remember Him and His faithfulness. But the Roman Catholic hierarchy were intensely against anything Jewish, so they eliminated these feasts. Instead, they substituted feasts adapted from pagans, many of which are dedicated to exalting the Queen of Heaven. These feasts, which are devoted to Mary, are annual reminders on the church calendar of how important the Queen of Heaven is to the Catholic faith. They're also reminders that this counterfeit Mary image has replaced our Lord Jesus as the sole means to salvation. Feast Honoring Mary, the Queen of Heaven. The Feast of the Immaculate Conception. This feast was proclaimed Catholic dogma in 1854. It commemorates the moment Mary was conceived by her mother. This feast has nothing to do with Jesus. Instead, it declares that Mary was free of original sin and was filled with grace and holiness from the moment of her conception. That's why Mary is often called the Immaculata, the Immaculate One. The Solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. This celebration commemorates the part Mary plays in salvation. Paying homage to Mary, a recent pontiff, Pope Paul VI, said this, The purpose of the celebration is to honor the role of Mary in the mystery of salvation, and at the same time to sing the praises of the unique dignity thus coming to the Holy Mother. He added that while Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is honored, so should be his mother, the Queen of Peace, through whose intercession we pray to God. The Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. This feast takes place in honor of a 16th century naval victory which kept Europe from Turkish invasion. Pope Pius V attributed the victory to the intercession of Mary because during the battle, European Catholics were praying the Rosary. The Assumption of the Blessed Virgin. In 1950, Pope Pius XII established the Feast of the Assumption to commemorate the death of Mary. He declared that her body was immediately assumed into heaven and never experienced decay. Because it signifies Mary's passing into eternal life, this is the most important of all Marian feasts and is a holy day of obligation for Catholics. This feast day also commemorates Mary's coronation as Queen of Heaven. The Demonic Paganism Behind Christmas and Easter Victory Feast for the Queen of Heaven Neither Christmas nor Easter is known as a feast day in the Bible. Easter was syncretized from worship of the mother goddess Ishtar. She was the Assyrian and Babylonian goddess of fertility, war, love, and sex. Ishtar was also known by other cultures as Asherah, Easter, Gaia, but the meaning was the same, Earth Mother. We discuss the demonic backdrop to Easter in teaching emails 49, Jesus Christ our Passover Lamb, and 58, Do You Dare Ask Yourself? The earliest followers of Jesus didn't observe either Christmas or Easter as special holy days and many later Christians resisted the religious hierarchy establishing these as celebrations. But despite their syncretism with pagan feasts, the Reformers accepted Christmas and Easter without question. Sadly for Christians today, both of these celebrations are a triumph for the Queen of Heaven Principality. Christmas, perpetuating the infancy of Jesus. As sentimental as nativity scenes are, 
Have you ever considered the image of Jesus they perpetuate in his helpless dependency on his mother? How many adult birthdays have you celebrated where people focus on the person as a baby rather than celebrating who they are now and what they've achieved thus far? The Queen of Heaven Principality uses Christmas to maintain the image of Jesus as a needy infant. That baby imagery, along with his mother tending him, has a powerful impact on people's perception. They don't view him as the adult King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But Scripture calls us to anticipate the triumphant return of Jesus as our King and Lord. Syncretizing pagan holidays and observances into Christmas. Contemporary Christmas celebrations typically blend a religious service with a far larger focus on self-indulgence, whether through gift exchange, partying, or overeating. Those practices reflect syncretist roots. Every year between December 17th and 25th, the wild and unruly celebration of Saturnalia took place throughout the Roman Empire. 4th century Roman Catholicism was able to convert large numbers of pagans to Christianity by promising them they could continue to celebrate Saturnalia. The church hierarchy called it Christmas, the Mass of Christ. The earliest Saturnalia turned into Christmas holidays were marked by drinking and sexual indulgence. One of the most depraved customs of the Saturnalia Carnival was intentionally revived by the Roman Catholic Church in 1466. For the amusement of the faithful, the church hierarchy forced Jews to run naked through the streets of Rome. That wasn't the only shameful use of Christmas by Roman Catholicism to humiliate Jewish people. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, Rabbis of the ghetto in Rome were forced to wear clownish outfits and march through the city streets as the crowd jeered and pelted them. And in 1881, as part of the Christmas celebration by Catholic Polish people, church leaders whipped the Poles into anti-Semitic frenzies that led to riots across the country. Jews were brutally murdered, huge numbers maimed, and many Jewish women raped. The Pagan Origin of Christmas Trees Just as the institution of Catholicism recruited Roman pagans by associating Christmas with the Saturnalia, worshippers of the Shara cult and its offshoots were recruited by the church through permitting the use of Christmas trees. Pagans had long worshipped trees in the forest or brought them inside their homes and decorated them. This practice was adopted and given a Christian veneer by the Roman Catholic Church. The Pagan Origin of Christmas Presents When the Caesars ruled Rome, the emperors compelled their citizens to bring them offerings and gifts during the Saturnalia celebration. Later, this ritual expanded so the general populace could give gifts to each other. Many Christians today rationalize that presents are exchanged because the Magi brought gifts to honor Jesus. But they miss the purpose and significance of these costly presents. Gold was a gift meant for a king. Frankincense represented a priestly gift. And myrrh was a burial ointment. Joseph. Jesus' stepfather was able to exchange these gifts for necessary provisions for his family's escape and stay in Egypt. Far from setting a precedent, these gifts were the means of supplying a specific need, not an excuse today to satiate people's greed. The Origin of Santa Claus, St. Nicholas The real Nicholas was born in Turkey in AD 270 and later became Bishop of Myra. In the 19th century, he was designated to sainthood by the Roman Church, but there's more to his story. In 1087, a group of sailors who idolized Nicholas transferred his bones from Turkey to Italy. 
the Nicholas cult spread northward and was adopted by German and Celtic pagans who worshipped a pantheon of deities led by Woden, their chief god. Known for his long white beard, Woden rode a horse through the heavens a particular evening each autumn. When the Nicholas character merged with Woden, he mounted a flying horse, rescheduled his flight for December, and wore heavy winter clothing. So in order to evangelize pagans in Northern Europe, the Roman Catholic Church adopted the Nicholas cult and caused the practice of gift distribution to take place on December 25th. Incidentally, the name of St. Nicholas changed to Santa Claus during the late Middle Ages through the influence of Dutch pronunciation. This is how pagan traditions shaped the celebration of Christmas through Roman Catholic influence. 